Hello. My goal this evening is to commit to you in the next five minutes that Capus is a toad. Cap Excuse me? Capus is a toad. It's a particularly interesting toad, and it's our toad. More students are taking Capus in high school than are taking Capus in universities and community colleges combined. What that means is we now have some ownership responsibilities for Calculus that I want to talk to you about tonight. Calculus is one of the great intellectual achievements of mankind. It's difficult for students to actually get a sense of that because most of what they see are a series of important techniques that prepare them to do the fun stuff later, but later never comes. This is what they really think Calculus is good for. Uh, now, they can't really imagine an important question that has an area between two curves as its answer, but they're sort of sure it exists, and they want to, they want to learn as much as they can about this, but the residue this leaves, the, the lasting impression about themselves as <laughs> learners and about calculus, they've done all the work, we've showed them the rules of the game, but we really never let them engage or play in the game. And this convinces me that what we've actually done is we've redshirted our students in calculus. They go to all the practices, we teach them all the rules, but we never let them play the game. This makes a certain amount of sense to redshirt students at one time, because historically, calculus was an alpha course. Alpha was the first course in a long series. Anyone who took calculus was gonna take those follow-up courses. It's now an omega course. It's the last course for most of the students who take it. To redshirt a student when they're gonna come back later makes sense. To red search someone in their last semester makes no sense at all. In all of our courses, we need to find some time each year to say, tomorrow, next week, I'm going to inspire my students to continue taking mathematics by what I do in class. Mathematics is an imaginary garden. We make it up. But it has real toads. The toads are the models of our reality. And it's those toads that are important. That's why calculus is a toad. It's our most glorious, wonderful toad. And it's this toadness that makes it one of the great <laughs> inventions of mankind. It's also that same toadness that can excite and captivate students. And that same toadness that allows them to demonstrate capabilities and understandings we never knew they had. It's the second tier that's really at stake. These are students that are multi-talented. They could be mathematicians, they could be journalists, they could be whatever interests them. And they universally leave mathematics. And when asked why, the response is very telling. They'll say something like, well, in the math class, all they ever wanted to know is whether I remembered what Descartes did. The answer is yes, because these are good students. There was never any joy in remembering. In a humanities class, we'll read a paper, and the teacher says, what did you think? They don't want to know what Mark T Twain thought. They want to know, what did you think? How would you change the last paragraph? The way they describe this is we get to use our own minds rather than borrowing someone else's. These students like to think, they like to create, they like to explore. They're not ready to do creative mathematics in the imaginary garden in, in theoretical mathematics, but they're more than ready to do creative mathematics with the toads. You need to give them interesting, challenging, open-ended problems and give them time to think and time to play with those ideas. Statistics has a little bit of a head start here. In statistics, AP Statistics has this problem number nine, problem number six. Problem number six is a problem, students aren't supposed to know how to do it. They're supposed to figure out how to do it. The difference in knowing and figuring out is tremendous. And here's why. Recent studies in neuroscience have indicated that the intent of the learner, what you're planning to do with what you're learning, has a tremendous effect on how and where you store the information in your brain. If your goal is simply to pass the test, then once the test is passed, you will have no command of that material. Does that ring a bell with anyone who teaches? Okay. So it's not just a problem of teaching to the test. There's a real problem of learning for the test in terms of what it allows students to do. They have to have the intent of problem solving and sense making to make it worthwhile. A couple of comments about our students. These are the best students that the parents have. They're not keeping the good ones at home. We need to teach them as if their future is dependent upon it, because it does, and so does ours. So I want to encourage you to give your students the opportunities to use their own minds, to play with the wonderful toads in our mathematical garden, and experience the creative process of modeling 
and I hope you will join me in the re of calculus. Thank you.